Again. Settled in. I thought we'd spring into action this week with a jolly caper on Super Mario World. The level I've set aside is Donut Plains 1. Your assignment is to collect 200 coins and exit the level in less than 1 minute 15 seconds. Au revoir. And donning the mantle of everybody's favourite plumber is Catherine Allen from Guernsey. <laughs> Now, Catherine, tell me something interesting about Guernsey. Oh, well, the people are friendly and there's lovely beaches and the computer games are cheaper. That was three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. We won't worry about that. All right, now, Catherine, how have you been doing in practice? Oh, well, I've been doing OK. I think I'll do it. OK, well, if you'd like to sit yourself down... We'll... Secret pipe. Go in and find all the coins in there. OK, then. Catherine, are you ready? Then off you go. Off goes Catherine here. And Mario's powered up immediately to Super Mario. Now she has to find the pipe. Um, it should be fairly easy, seeing the pace she's taking the screen at. She's gone very, very fast at DTS. She's only been gone for 15 seconds. She's through the halfway stage. She's powered up again to Super Mario. Now, what's this, point. Frank? She's she gone down into a secret world. There's a feather which should make her fly. Yeah. OK, up she goes. She's just coming up to 30 seconds. Millions of coins. She should do this, no problem. Coins she in just... abundance. Yeah. More coins the time's ticking. D, one seconds to get out. It's going to be very, very tight indeed here. Still has to reach the end of this level. She and there's does. quite a few baddies in the way. But she's got a cape, Frank. That'll be able to knock them out of the way with that. And here she goes. She's only got seven seconds left. She's nearly there. Five, there is. four, three. Oh, she's done it. She's out. Two seconds left. Three reviewers have flown out desperate for some offshore ecstasy. Will they find it? Let's check out this week's offerings. This week, guard your mouse fingers as we look at role-playing games. First up on the Super NES, defeat dastardly dragons in Draken. On first playing Draken, it didn't take me long to discover that the plot is so linear that I wouldn't be surprised if British Rio had a hand in the design. At times the animation really isn't as smooth as it could be. I spent a very long time trying to fight what I thought was a blob of jelly. I think it turned out to be... ...unrivalled in its level of detail and complexity. I enjoy playing Legends of Valor a lot, and I think it would also be a good game for people who haven't played many RPGs before, because it is so easy to get into. Now it's time for some hardware reviews, and its cheeky phallic references are plenty as we look at four of the latest joysticks attempting to alleviate your gaming exasperation. First, strengthen your shoryukens with the Capcom Street Fighter 2 joystick. This is pretty good, it's more like an arcade joystick than it. It's got these nice neat little buttons on here, and you've got an added feature which are these turbo sections, which enable you to keep your finger down on the button instead of ripping it. It just dives all over the place. Um, it's, it's in a world of its own, absolute world of its own, no good at all. Guide your chassis into a slipstream or two with the Logic 3 freewheel. Now this really is the driving man's dream for any kind of driving game, because it's so realistic. You just obviously turn right to right, left to left, and to accelerate you just push the, um, the whole wheel forward and then to slow down, you pull it back. It's really sensitive. But that is also a problem because it does take quite a long time to get used to it. But once you do master it, it's excellent. Basically, it gets the thumbs up for me, and it's also a very good price. Finally, three cheers for consumer exploitation. It's the characteristics. Gone are the days of playing around with your own small and rather insignificant joystick. Pieces will be on display at Games Master Live. Here's all the info you'll need. The date, December 4th, 5th and 6th, the place, the Birmingham NEC. For information and bookings, call the NEC box office on 021 780 Some handy hardware hints there. Now it's special guest time, so it's over to Games Master for tonight's Celebrity Challenge. My next challenge has the unsavoury title of Soccer Brawl. 
futuristic gladiators wage war on each other under the skimpy guise of a football match using supercharged ballistic shooting powers to blast me in the dugout is game zones jeremy daudry welcome jeremy thanks dominic how are you doing i'm very well thanks now very listen good. obviously callum's got his work cut out for him today any tips you can give him well i think he's got a tough match ahead of him i think just to play as dirty as he possibly can really and that's the key to this game so we've got two one minute halves are our two competitors ready for kickoff then off you go Okay, I think we have Callum playing from left to right, Japan, and Vinny playing from right to left, Korea. So Callum's got it, he's waving up. Oh no, Vinny's got it again. Now, these power meters at the top. Oh dear, I have to stop that there. Oh, it's a goal already! Oh, that was a power shot there, Jeremy. That was. If you look at the power meters on the top, when they start to flash, the player can play a special power move. And I think Vinny's going back to pull another one. Oh, Vinny is. Now, this is his captain here. This is captain with, with the pigtail. You can always tell the captain. Oh, Superb shot. So you can actually wipe out the other players with the strength of your football. You certainly can. You can knock them for six. And uh, oh my what lovely sliding tackle by Callum. Unfortunately, oh. the other man's got it. Says, oh. oh, assisted by the post. Oh, and it's a corner kick. That was a remarkable save from close range there by Callum. Danny Jones is definitely dominating this match. Most he strongly. Is. He's got it again. It's a oh, it's bang. Blue it's a diving header and a oh. goal by Vinny Jones. So it's 2 0. Are we going to see a comeback from Callum? I think the longer he leaves it, the more impossible it looks. Now, this looks promising. He's a break for Callum. He takes a shot. He oh. takes out one man. Now, we're coming to the end of the first half. The referee looks at his watch and he blows the whistle. <laughs> so it's half time here at Games Master Stadium. Vinnie Jones is leading Callum Green by two goals to nil. If you want to find out the outcome of this amazing soccer challenge, join us after the break. <laughs> in the middle of soccer brawl on the Neo Geo. Vinny Jones is leading young upstart Callum Green by two goals to nil. Are our two competitors ready? Yep. Then kick off the second half. Oh! Now, Jeremy, we are looking for something special from Callum here. We said now, Callum's got it all to do in the second half, but I feel that he's got it in him. He just pulls it all together now. Okay, the teams haven't swapped sides because this is future football and you don't mess about with girls plays things like that. Not at all. So Callum is in the red, shooting from left to right. And the Claxons are blaring here. Oh, lovely little cheeky overhead kick from Callum there. Here comes Callum again. He's just got to straighten up and let one fly. Let it fly. Oh, it's off the post. The goalie got a tip to it. So it's so a corner close, so here. It's close. over there. Are we going to see? It's oh, it's going to take. Oh, no, the goalie gets to it again. I think Callum's basically out over here. Basically, going to get a goal for Pride. Maybe a last minute surge and get one goal. Maybe two if he's lucky. But here comes Vinny. Vinny's pounding on the field. Let's a short goal. Attack. But he saved these. They're just going to put that right up the part now and see what they can muster. But again, very, very close to time is ticking away. The referee looks at his watch, he's carrying on. Oh, oh my word, a lovely save by Callum's oh. keeper. There's people on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now. Oh. Special guest, Vinny After those frantic frolics, it's time for a gentle hover up to Games Master's helipad for the consultation zone. A welcome up to the helipad. What's your query? On Super Mario World, when I'm flying around the ghost house in the Valley of Bowser, I can see a key, but I can't get to it. Can it be reached? It can indeed, so listen carefully. The opening is obviously too small to fly through, so collect the P-switch and return to the mystery block. Strike the block from beneath and a fountain of coins will magically appear. By pressing right, then up on your D-pad a few times, this stream of golden currency can be guided to create a series of steps toward the key. Then strike the P-switch and... I have a problem with Rex Nebula and the gender vendors. I can get out of the underwater cave, but then a large lady falls on me. You're closer than you realize, young man. From the pool, you will need to head right until you reach a pit surrounded by leaves. Collect some of this fallen foliage and use it to camouflage the pit. Bait this trap with the delicious Twinkie fruit and simply stand back. 
The fruit of your labour can now be seen, as the obese but somewhat dense woman is lowered towards your cunning trap. She'll fall into the hole and plug that perilous pit for the rest of the game. Well, thank you. Time for just one more, I think. Hello, Games Master. How can I help you? On Bad Gravity, I can't seem to kill the Guardian on level 9. What should I be doing? There's a perfectly good reason for this. He can't be killed. Fire at his feet and he'll move towards you. At this point, leap lively over him and proceed to cross the fire pit with your transporter. By so doing, you will live to fight another day. Thanks. That's it for the moment, though I must say, I do rather enjoy my role as agony uncle. Bye for now. So, some sound advice for everyone to be getting on with there. Now it's time for tonight's final challenge, but instead of going back to Chrome Dome for it, we've got something a little bit special lined up. I'd now like to welcome back one of our guests from the first series. He is undefeated for over three years at games playing, one of the greatest games players in the world, the Sega European champion, Danny Curley. <laughs> So, um, listen, Danny, we know that you're actually, your job is actually as a games tester. Yeah. So how many hours a day do you play? Seven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> now, Danny, because you're so good, this isn't just any old challenge. What we're going to do, we're going to throw it open to the audience. Anybody in the audience can nominate any Sega game and you will take them on at it. How, how do you feel? Uh, I'll have a go at it anyway. OK, so if there's anyone in the audience who fancies their chances on any Sega game, please stick your arms up. OK, right, there's uh, quite a fair few there with their arms up. And, uh, oh, tell you what, there's a rather enthusiastic young gentleman there with a quite natty little cap on. Could you please come down, please? Give a round of applause for our challenger. Hi. Now, what's your name? John Morrison. And where have you come from today, John? We're in Hertfordshire. OK, lovely. So what's your challenge for Curly, then? I want to do a speed challenge on Sonic. So what, any particular level? Spring Yard Zone 2. Right. Speed challenge on Spring Yard Zone 2. How can you, do you think you can do that, Curly? Yeah, I'll have a crack at beating him. OK, then, Johnny, if you'd like to go first, uh, plop yourself down in the hot seat there. And um, we'll get ready to play. And joining me in the commentary box tonight is Dave Perry from Sega Pro. Dave, welcome back to Games Master. Great to be back, Don. OK, now, any tips you can give John for this uh, level on Sonic? It's a speed challenge, so stick to the top of the screen and just go like the clappers. OK, great. John, are you ready? Yeah. Then off you go. And here goes everybody's favourite hedgehog, and he's slowed down a bit there. Good tactic, Dave? Not a good tactic, no. The best tactic is to go over that left-hand side, hit that spring, and that gives you the speed you need to the start of the challenge. So actually, he's, uh, you won't be too happy with that. OK, well, this is obviously... Yeah, but he should have been about 14 seconds then, so he's behind. OK, so the timer says 25 seconds, though it's still not bad. It's got quite a good time here, Dave. No, no, he's doing well. He just avoided going down there. If he'd have fallen into that chasm, he'd have got into a pinball area, which would have taken him ages to get out, and the challenge would have been over. Oh! He's hit another one there. He still managed to pick up a ring, which means he can afford to get hit by something. Is that That's right, true. Dave? If he's got the ring, then he, he's still got another hit. Yeah. If he didn't have the ring, then he'd be killed if he got hit again. Okay. Oh my God. People are coming up as there. Yeah. They're, oh, a lovely okay. little bit of jumping there. And you avoided those little men that were chasing him. They're very tricky because oh. they're very, very fast. Okay. He's coming up 47, 48 seconds. He's quite near the end of the level. And 49 okay. seconds. A very, very good time by John Morrison. John, if you'd like to vacate your seat and make way for Danny Curley for his challenge. Now, Dave, uh, John may have had a couple of uh, hiccups there and then, but uh, 49 seconds is not to be sniffed at. Still an excellent time, still an excellent time. Barring nerves, though, I've got a feeling Danny might just, might just pip it. OK, Danny, are you ready? Right. Off you go. Danny's got 49 seconds to beat. I mean, it's, it's no slight of a time, Dave. You can't get too confident. It's a very, very good time now. He can't afford very many mistakes. Well, that's a very good start. That he's very good start. He got the, the speed. He got the speed there that he needed. Okay, Get through these corner. creatures. He's got his time in the top left hand corner. 10 seconds, he's doing very oh, well. Superb, indeed, yeah. superb. Avoided those Excellent. And he's at the top in 13 seconds. I think at this stage, he really has Danny said the perfect round this time. 28 Going seconds through. is a good three Watch out for the little men. Little ball men will be coming any minute now. Little spatters, right, here they come. This is the last difficult bit. He's made this very safe. This is that, man. Yeah. Oh, this is a superb time from Danny Curley. real expert. He's carving up, but he's still going. He's very near the end there, but I think he's going to do it. Perfect example.
Now, John, bad luck, mate. Um, but it was, it was a very good time you got there. So, so what, what was the difference in the end, do you think? Well, I think I lost it on one of the jumps, but... Well, another show reaches its joyous denouement. On Andy Mauritius' hostess trolley tonight, we have salmon and broccoli quiche. We'll see you same time next week. Good night.